Well, Merry Christmas, one and all. It's so good to be able to deliver this service today, this IT service, and just want you to know that I hope that everybody who takes this in does have a very Merry Christmas, which would certainly imply that it be a safe Christmas for all of us. This is a wonderful, wonderful celebration this Christmas is, and we give thanks and praise to God for the birth of the Messiah. It is so good to be able to share in this time with you. Just so everyone is clear, we'll have a IT service again next week, as we always do, and next week we'll be coming up on New Year's Day, and just in case anyone is looking to come in for in-person worship either Christmas Day or New Year's Day, the time of worship on both occasions will be at 10 o'clock in the morning. Just one service those two days. But again, God's blessings to you and to yours through this whole holiday season and throughout the new year. We begin this service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
And now the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord God, we've been talking about your Advent these last four weeks talking about your coming into the world, and we give you thanks for coming to us. We thank you for the birth of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We thank you for continually coming to us, word and sacrament, prayer and hymn, deeds of mercy and love, comforting us, reassuring us, strengthening us, and we thank you, Lord, as we look toward the second coming that will come when you are ready for it to come. Lord, as we celebrate the birth now during these 12 great days of Christmas, may we always be grateful for the best and the truest Christmas gift ever. Amen. I think it's safe to say that we do make a big deal over Christmas. All kinds of TV shows are on right now and movies are out there. And I've noticed in some of the shows, like one that I saw as parts of it the other night, that when it came time for opening the gifts, everyone just kind of dove in, grabbed their gifts and opened them as quickly as they can and see what's lying underneath the pretty wrapping paper. It's a season, this Christmas season, always is of tinsel and glitter, we could say. It's a time for dressing up in special ways, at work, at church, in gatherings. It's a time of much gift giving, special music, wonderful foods, baked items, decorations, parties, and gatherings. It's the most gala time of the year. But you know, contrast this with how the birth of Jesus really occurred. 
I guess if I was in charge, if I was going to send the Messiah into the world, I would have done it with all kinds of pomp and ceremonies, red carpet treatment, the best of foods and drinks, an incredible parade. But that's not how it happened, is it? Rather, it happened in a very humble and austere way. Joseph, Mary make their way to Bethlehem, where, G where Joseph had to be registered. And when they get there, Mary delivers the child. There's no parade. There's no party. There's no red carpet that they just walked on. No special branches waving. In fact, there wasn't even room for them in the inn. No vacancy signs were flashing out at them. So does, where does Mary place the child that she has just given birth to? In a manger, which is a feeding trough for cattle. That's how the God incarnate, the Lord of our lives, the savior of the world came into the world and what he was laid in. It couldn't get more austere and humble than that. Indeed, our way really attempts to push Jesus out of his own birthday. And I know for many, many people that's in, done certainly in an inadvertent way. But society has us really trying to push Jesus out of his big B day. And the reason for this is because the focus is on our pleasure, what we can get out of the holiday season. Indeed, there's an, even an emphasis today on being politically correct. Don't say Merry Christmas, say Happy Holidays. But, but, this is about Christmas, Jesus' birth, Jesus' birth, the birth of God's Son. That is what this season indeed is about for us and for the world, past, present, and future tenses of people. It's about the birth of Jesus. I've talked before about paradoxes in the Bible. The last shall be first and the first shall be last. The person who exalts the self will be humbled. The person who humbles the self will be exalted. In order to gain your life, you have to lose your life. These paradoxes really help inform our faith. And there's a paradox here which is seen in the three great claims being made by the angel about this little baby, this little innocent, helpless, vulnerable baby. This baby is the savior. This baby is the Christ or the Messiah, which means the anointed one of God. And this baby is indeed the savior. And the sign that all this is true is seen in the simple surroundings of the birth. To ask a question, I'll ask this to the in-person people too, on Christmas Eve. Why are you here? Why are you taking this service in? And of course, I'm delighted that you are and grateful that you are. There may be various reasons why you're doing it. And perhaps for all of us, whether we're taking in the service online or in person, in our loneliness and emptiness that we all have to a certain degree and extent in our lives, maybe in the midst of this loneliness and emptiness, you and I, 
long for a Savior, a Messiah, and a Lord in our lives. Christmas is so splendid because the night we claim that the one born in Bethlehem is indeed these things. That this is God coming into the world to effect salvation for the world. This is God coming to us in pure love to make the biggest difference that could ever be made in human lives and for human lives. This is the heart of salvation history. Before our Lord could be the crucified one and then the risen one, he had to be born. And we celebrate that very special advent of God coming into the world in the flesh, in the sun, on that first Christmas. Why God's love for us, sinful, mortal, fallible people that we are. Why? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. God did it out of love, a never ending love for us. So in the midst of all the hustle and bustle and the commercialization of Christmas that can really irk many of us during the holiday seasons, we might ask, what does it mean? What does this really mean? Certainly not what the red, green, silver, and gold celebration would suggest. And of course, the amazing thing about it is that the whole gaudy show, even at its worst, at its very worst, never succeeds in suppressing the real meaning of the event. The person breaks through it all. And as in every age, wise men and women and shepherds, the sophisticated and the simple, are able to reaffirm in their own language that only in this child, the son, this given, simple, gentle, and powerless person lies our peace and our salvation. Amen.
With wonder and thanksgiving for Christ's coming into the world, we pray for the church, the life of the earth, and the whole human family. The church in every land makes a joyful noise to herald your coming, O God. We give thanks for poets, musicians, and hymn writers who give voice to our praise and for all who lead the church's worship. God of grace, hear our prayer. This day dawns with new hope for all living things, and from ocean depths to mountain peaks the earth rejoices. Inspire in us an urgent zeal to protect the planet and renew its resources. God of grace, hear our prayer. Bring heavenly peace to this world and an end to armed conflict. Raise up leaders in every nation who will honor human rights and establish equal justice for all people. Give courage to all who speak out against oppression and advocate for the powerless. God of grace, hear our prayer. Guard the lives of any in danger, especially those who work to protect others. Lead any who are in desperate circumstances to sanctuary, help, and safety. Grant rest to the weary and soothe those who are troubled, especially those we have listed on our prayer list. God of grace, hear our prayer. Bless all who gather to worship on this holy day. Be present at our tables and celebrations and watch over those who travel. Sustain charities, outreach ministries, and food pantries that give generously to people in need. God of grace, hear our prayer. In Christ we have beheld your glory, full of grace and truth. We give thanks for those in every generation who reflect the light of Christ. May their witness shine forth in our time. God of grace, hear our prayer. Pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of God. Amen. Gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.